Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Appreciate you taking the time to join me today. We're talking about next-gen networks. Um, so I want to talk about why those are important to businesses, um, especially businesses of cryptocurrency. Uh, I want to share with you kind of a few case studies, including our own path um, to the cloud and, and the networking solution required to get there. Uh, and then I'll also share some of my thoughts and some, some questions you can help to evaluate your own business and, and any potential partners uh, you hire to help implement your own next-gen network. Uh, but firstly, let's you know let's let's take it back just a little bit. You know, let's define what a network is and, and why it's important to a business. Um, just to be clear, what we're talking about, um, and then we can kind of talk about the differences between what we would call a traditional and next-gen network. Uh, the marketing team has told me, um, made me swear to keep it out of the weeds, so I'll do my best not to make it too technical. But I don't promise a whole lot. Um, so people often under underestimate the importance of good network infrastructure. Um, it's in fact the baseline technology organizations need for, for their business to run smoothly. Um, it can consist of really obvious things like internet connectivity, firewall switches, you know, wireless. Um, but it includes things like the physical wiring in the walls. It can include data centers, um, intrusion protection and detection systems, web filtering, I mean, and, and a list of other security tools. It can even include your cell phone, right? Cloud applications like Office 365 or Azure or AWS. It includes employees' home networks. It inc includes coffee shops, you know, wherever your, your, your people are working. Uh, a network touches every part of a business, and its, border, its borders often extend um, much further beyond the company walls. Um, and this has been, you know, obviously driven by a growing demand for remote workforce, um, companies building more and more distributed office spaces, uh, applications might get into the cloud, and it's made it really difficult for IT professionals to keep up. Uh, they both have to implement these, these complex systems and do it in a secure and, and robust way. Um, so how's that different from a next-gen firewall then? Um, well, I mean, it, a next-gen network is exactly all the same components, um, but it, it works to implement, implement them all in a, in a really seamless way. Uh, so it focuses on an intelligent solutioning, um, application-aware, systems, um, identity management, um, you know, finding cost-effective uh, connectivity options. It, it prioritizes you know, data streams. It's, it relies on cybersecurity. It, it reduces manpower. It does all these things in a very kind of uh, cohesive way. Um, and it, it most commonly starts uh, with a next-gen firewall. Uh, and I'm going to use you know, the next-gen firewall versus traditional firewall to kind of help demonstrate the, the differences here. Um, and I found actually that Fortinet, um, they've got a really great infographic up on the next slide that I think uh, helps articulate it. And I'll, I'll run through some of the, the key points here. Um, so again, one step back, what does what's a firewall do? Um, it's, it's not just the buzzword in movies, right? You know, every movie says, you know, we, we, we've broken through 15 firewalls to get to wherever we're trying to get. And, and, and that's generally, you know, maybe it's a little bit right, but it's mostly wrong. Uh, traditional firewalls describe really just devices that control the traffic that's allowed to enter or exit a network. Um, and they came in two flavors traditionally, right? They were, they were stateful and stateless. Um, stateless firewalls, um, they check over every single ounce of information that runs through a network, and they're just not intelligent, right? They just they allow in and, and allow out based on a, a certain set of rules. Um, stateful firewalls, right, kind of the next evolution, um, they begin to track traffic flow and are able to keep track of where the, tr uh, the, 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 the information is flowing uh, in and out of. Uh, obviously, you know, a firewall that's able to track, uh, that level of information is more effective, but it still left things a little short. Um, they were limited um, in the, 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 the depth of inspection of the data that they get, can go. Uh, they were not sophisticated at all and often required, you know, additional tools or applications or appliances to, to run securely. Um, so that's where the next generation firewall kind of came into play. Um, you know, it can be, it's a term used by a lot of vendors, um, and the specifics obviously can change from vendor to vendor, but generally speaking, they, there's a couple features that they all include. Um, they should, you know, as I mentioned before, right, they should be application aware, um, which I think is one of the biggest differences between traditional and next-gen firewalls. Uh, traditional firewalls relied on uh, very well-defined ports and rules that determine the, um, whether traffic can come in and out of a network. Uh, now, next-gen firewalls, um, they actually, they're, they're capable of seeing inside the network, right? They, they, they know exactly what application is running on that network traffic um, and can allow uh, based on that. 
um, it was critical uh, to combat hackers, right? As hackers uh, improved their tools and their, their methods to, to get inside of a network, uh, we, uh, the, the good guys had to become more sophisticated as well. And this was a big step towards that. Uh, next gen firewalls should include identity awareness, right? They should have the ability to track identity, the traffic by both the device that it came from and the user authorized to use it. Um, this way you control not only the type of traffic that comes in and out of the network, but who's allowed to use it. Um, of course, uh, next gen firewalls still use stateful packet inspection, um, but it goes a lot deeper, right? Uh, if, if you're familiar with the OSI model, great, right? Um, you, know, it, you know, traditional firewalls were, were good between layer two and layer four. Uh, the the next-gen firewalls take it all the way to layer seven, which is at the application level. Um, additionally, they should, you know, they should include uh, intrusion protection and intrusion detection systems, right? Uh, like I said before, right, these used to be systems that had to be deployed separately from your firewall. Uh, They're sometimes difficult to implement, could be costly, uh, you know, often any, an ineffective solution. Uh, with next-gen firewalls, uh, the intrusion detection and, and protection are, are features that are built right into the platform, right? They're there and available immediately from, like, from when you install the product. Um, and the last big um, feature that I think is important to understand the difference between next-gen firewalls and, and, and really next-gen networks is, is it the intelligence uh, that it brings to the table. They, they should be able to obviously collect their own intelligence and make decisions, but they should be able to connect to external resources, um, right? They should be able to connect to global repositories of heuristics and, and other threat fingerprints um, that the IT community as a whole can contribute to. Um, so we all end up battling, you know, cyber threats together rather than trying to solve it alone. So there's tons, right? This uh, the firewall, right? That's one kind of component. That's one component of the next gen network, and, and and there are tons of additional components we could talk about, but. Um, it's a place where most people get started, and, and it's a place where we can really articulate the, the differences. So um, I'll let you go do some of your own due diligence on additional components, but um, let's talk about some of uh, the indicators um, that it may be time for you to be thinking about a next-gen network. Um, and they, they generally fall into four buckets, I found. Um, you know, and, and we'll start with the easy one here, like equipment lifecycle. Um, if you th and, and all that means is you, know, you buy a set of hardware, um, and that hardware has a certain lifespan, right? Um, generally, servers last four or five years, networking devices four or five years, computers three or four, so on and so forth. So at some point, every network will have to get replaced. Um, it's just inevitable. Um, it's it's going to have to happen. Um, and so this this opportunity is you know the the most convenient time to really think about implementing implementing the latest and greatest technology. Um, and so what we found here, uh, at least in, in the Midwest, is you know, a lot of companies pushed off the network upgrade because they don't understand it's important, right? And it was easy to push off, right? Um, and, and, and it was really back in 2008 that this started happening. And the result of that now is, is a lot of organizations are playing catch up. Um, you know, they're paying off the IT debt that they've accumulated since 2008 and, and, and not maintaining that, that cycle. Uh, the good news is uh, that a lot of companies still running these old firewalls and switch solutions and internet services um, are running on contracts or service plans that are, are just expensive. Um, you know, new technology uh, drives costs down all the time. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've switched a client to a next-gen network um, by, you know, looking at their internet connectivity and their firewall solutions and their, up, their maintenance and upkeep. Um, and I saved, you know, the, 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 this company had 12, 12 sites, so they were a pretty large group, but they saved almost 30 grand a year um, because no one had reviewed these systems or the contracts um, in years. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's real money that we saved them, that they're able now to take that and reinvest into the things that are valuable to, to running their business. Um, so, I mean, really that's, you know, why we, we more often than not, when we, when we take on a new client or assess a client, or uh, we always start with a network. Um, it's one of the most impactful places that we can we can make a difference um, quickly, um, and obviously it's the foundation of, of your technology stack. You know, think of it like the foundation of your house. Uh, you wouldn't install a second floor, you know, on a on, on a crumbling foundation. Um, the second floor being, you know, could be a cloud application that you want to move to, like Office 365 or Dynamic CRM or any other critical business software. It could be deploying a remote workforce, it could be installing a new disaster recovery system or, or mitigating cybersecurity threats. Uh, all these are, 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 are high value 
things that you would want to implement for your organization that, that would not work well if the, if the, the foundation wasn't there. Um, so the next big bucket um, of indicators uh, would be you know, application and cloud migrations. Um, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're venturing into the world of cloud, um, you know, awesome. Um, if you're pushing your business uh, to be bleeding edge in technology, great. Um, but stop and ask, can your offices even connect to them? You know, I, I've, I've had a client that was running you know, some traditional MPLS networks with a bunch of T1s. They had about 10 offices or so. And you know, they, were, they were trying to get to the cloud. They wanted to be there. Um, they, they had all these plans to get there, but they struggled uh, massively with performance problems. Um, and they just assumed that it was the cloud, right? The cloud is bad because uh, it was performing bad. And, and when we got in to help, I mean, it was obvious for us, right? The network just wasn't built to, to handle what they were trying to do. I mean, compare it to, to merging on I-465 using a donkey path, right? I mean, it's just, it's just not gonna work. Um, so, I mean, really, applications should be able to live anywhere at this point, you know, and, and your network uh, should be able to accommodate that. Uh, the third big bucket, um, security risk. I mean, obviously, um, you know, security in the cyber security landscape, it changes every single day. Um, you've likely been spearfished. You've, you know, you've likely dealt with ransomware in the past couple years. Um, you know, that landscape continuously evolves. So should the network. Um, it should absolutely include the intrusion protection and, and detection that we talked about earlier. You should know what's coming in and out of your business in a very intelligent way. Um, the, the last big bucket uh, is business growth. Um, and this one's um, kind of a positive one at least, right? The, uh, you know, the, the economy is doing really well, which is good for our businesses, um, which means right, you're probably adding more office space or maybe you're remodeling. Um, maybe you're pushing into new technology that, that you've been thinking about. Um, technology obviously can become a differentiator for you as an organization. Um, maybe you're just trying to attract the best talent. Um, you know, running a next-gen network can enable your people um, and the potential people you hire to work remotely, um, access the latest systems, and do it securely and seamlessly to, to how they live. Employees expect technology to work at this point, and when it doesn't, they'll leave. They'll find somewhere where it does. Um, especially with the job pool being as tight as it is these days, um, you know, it can be a big factor for whether they choose to work. Uh, so again, the message here, right, is the, the way people want to work is, is, has shifted. It's not is shifting, it has shifted, and organizations have to shift with them. Uh, so let's, let's talk about KSM Consulting's kind of case study here, our, our, our trip to the cloud. Um, before before I jump in, though, um, are there any questions around next-gen firewalls or networking or any of the topics we've talked about so far? Um, if you do have questions, please feel free to type them in the box on the right-hand side of the screen. You can take a look at those now, and if we don't get to that right now, uh, we will definitely welcome you into the call. So one that did come in, Ryan, is what makes Fortinet the right solution? Um, yeah, so Fortinet, um, I mean, the reason I used their, their infographic earlier, because, you know, we do, we do believe in the Fortinet product from a next-gen firewall standpoint. Um, for us, um, you know, it ties to our case study a little bit, um, uh, where, you know, we were kind of first, or not first, I don't want to say first, but we were very early to market um, with the Microsoft Azure product. And, you know, many of our clients have distributed offices. And... Uh, to get them all to connect uh, seamlessly um, to Azure, uh, as we started thinking about you know how to move workloads there, um, Fortinet was kind of one of the first to market in the Azure platform. Um, you know, we 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 tried tr traditional Cisco solutions at the time, and they worked. Right, you can make it work, but it's, it was a little overly complex and and and, and hard to manage. Uh, Fortinet made it really simple for us to get connected to our, our us specifically and our clients to get connected to the, to the Azure product. So. Good question. Anything else? All right. Uh, well, let's jump into our case study then. Um, so, I mean, several years ago, obviously, we, we came to the same crossroads uh, that many of you all do um, and had to make the decision to move to the cloud or not um, for lots of reasons. I mean, it made sense for us to shift. Um, you know, we had ISP, our internet connectivity contracts were up for renewal. Um, you know, as a technology provider ourselves, we wanted to continue to, to improve our security posture. 
Um, we were adding additional office spaces, you know, with downtown office and, and Colorado office. Uh, we wanted to improve business continuity. Why, what happens in, in the case of a disaster? How do our people continue to work? Um, you know, we wanted to minimize the, the manpower required to support all the systems. We wanted to avoid all the big upfront costs that come with, with hardware refreshes. Um, and we were running old gear, um, old Cisco gear. Um, so if you, look, if you go back and look at that, that factor slide, when we had all the major indicators actually of uh, telling us to shift to uh, the cloud and implement a next-gen network. Um, and it may to help um, to hear a little bit about, about where we came from, I guess. Um, you know, we, we used to run, like, you know, with the expensive T1s, Cisco firewalls, Cisco switching, wireless, on-site servers, just like everyone else. And, and honestly, if that sounds familiar, you should, you should call us. Uh, <laughs> we, can, we can help build a plan for you to get, at, get out of that, that cycle. Um, but, you know, we evaluate and implement solutions for, for our clients all the time. Um, you know, it really wasn't a surprise for us when it, it came up for renewal for us that we had to do the same thing that we do for our clients. Um, so, I mean, it, we in, in installed high-speed sla circuits from, you know, reputable inter internet provider. We got rid of the old T1s. Uh, we, we built, you know, we added secondary, you know, cheap broadband circuits in for failover. Um, we, you know, we shifted as many applications to, you know, software as a service products as we could. Uh, we evaluated our entire application portfolio and, and figured out what made sense and, and shifted them. What didn't make sense, we, we shifted to infrastructure as a service where it made sense. And so uh, if, if stuff didn't make sense as a SaaS product, we, we at least put it in a cloud solution. Um, we even kept some of the solutions on-prem, right? The ones that didn't make sense, that weren't viable to move yet. Um, and we, ha well, we have a plan for those, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. That's kind of the beauty of, uh, of a, good, a good network. Um, we obviously, we upgraded our, our traditional kind of Cisco firewalls to, to the next-gen firewall with the FortiGate, um, right, installing IDS and IPS. Uh, and then we installed identity-based wireless, um, you know, again, just to help improve our security posture. And, you know, I, I summed all that up in, you know, six or seven bullets, but, you know, don't let me, let me fool you. I mean, that took months of planning and execution, um, you know, but a good IT department, you know, is planning for that, right? They should have a roadmap for these kinds of decisions and, and how to predict what's going to come up next. And I think on the next slide here, um, you know, we listed some uh, solutions uh, you know, that should be kind of considered when you're talking about next-gen networks and, and cloud solutioning, right? Because our way isn't the only way. There's, 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 there's many ways to get to the cloud. There's many ways to implement a network. Um, it a absolutely depends on what your company's specific needs are. Um, and so we listed out a few for you to think about. Um, you, know, at, you know, when you're thinking about these solutions, you need to think about a good data center, right? It can be, um, you know, pure cloud data center like Azure. It could be, you know, some of our local carriers like, you know, Lightbound and Expedient. You know, all do really great jobs. Um, firewalls, right, from a next-gen standpoint, you know, I think Fortinet's probably at the top of its game, but Barracuda and Sonicwall also have really great products that you should consider. Um, there's a lot of great internet connectivity in town. Um, and there's, you know, from a switching standpoint, right? You know, Cisco, HP, Fortinet all have all have really good products. So, you really got to kind of dig into what what's valuable to you, what's important to you in building these networks, uh, and then find a partner that, you know, find a group of partners, I guess, that that fit your needs. Um, we tech we tend to take a very agnostic approach to our solution design. Um, so we 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 mixed and match based on you know the best fit for us in each one of the categories. Um, we have a few other case studies um, that we can chit chat about as well. Uh, I think the first one is a property management organization. Um, I think this one's interesting because uh, it really kind of ar articulates the, the uh, distributed network. Um, they had a, a massively dispersed workforce, right? The majority of their people were, were work remotely. Um, you know, they needed to incorporate networks into their building design, into the management. Um, you know, they used technology as a differentiator for how they were building these buildings. Um, they didn't have a lot of cost control. Um, they didn't have the ability to manage these systems remotely, and they were faced with some new compliance challenges. So, I mean, we, we stepped in and um, they, were, they wanted to take a cloud-first approach. We, we agreed. Uh, we, we helped evaluate all their systems and said it made a lot of sense. 
Um, and then we needed a next-gen network to get them to, to connect to those systems, right? Um, their solution, right? They moved their workloads into Azure and Office 365. They, they, used, uh, they moved from traditional file servers to Box for doc management. Uh, they, 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 uh, the Fortinet security platform allowed for them uh, to solve their compliance challenges. Um, and Barracuda Essentials helped to solve some of their, um, the security challenges on uh, their collaboration platform. Uh, ultimately, right now, right, they have a completely compliant, 100% cloud uh, infrastructure, right? They have a very mobile workforce. Um, it's easy to support remotely. Um, they have predictable costs when they're building these solutions now uh, and have uh, helped them to, to, to grow their business much quicker than they were able to before. Uh, a second pretty interesting case study for us uh, was a, we had a large distribution center client. Um, again, came to us with some PCI compliance challenges in this case. Um, you know, they had really old hardware, right? The big indicator, the, 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 the hardware cycle for them was uh, approaching 15 years, I think. I mean, they had been running the same stuff for a while. Uh, obviously, it made it very difficult to manage um, and was not very reliable uh, for them. Uh, you know, they weren't quite ready to make that, 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 that all cloud, all or nothing shift. Um, and that's okay, all right? We, we help them get installed with a hybrid cloud solution, right? Uh, again, run, running on a, and I add the word resilient next-gen network in here because uh, they valued um, uh, the resiliency uh, in allowing multiple internet connections to come into these solutions and um, provide backup for each one of their sites. Uh, the, again, they used the Fortinet security fabric. Um, they used HP switching in this case. It, it aligned with you know, their existing technology. Uh, it allowed them to get to Office 365. It allowed them to start shifting their ERP to the cloud. Um, and uh, from a costing standpoint, right, they, they have 10 times the internet speed um, at the exact same cost that they were paying before. Um, so again, another kind of big win for uh, next-gen networks here. Uh, if any of those scenarios sound familiar to you, um, you know, obviously, you know, it, it's common. You aren't alone. Um, it is hard, but, uh, you know, you, you can find yourself a, a really great partner in town uh, to help you. Um, you know, you should be asking, you know, things like, what's your cloud strategy and, and are you spending a ton of money on legacy systems? Because if you are, right, you need to be reaching out uh, uh, to, to get help, right, that you don't have to, to suffer uh, in silence. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, on our next slide here, um, you know, how do you take the first step um, to, to finding a partner or knowing if you need to find a partner? Um, we've built um, kind of a quick checklist for you to help decide um, if you should be upgrading to a next-gen network and, and how to evaluate some potential partners. Uh, it's either going to come later today or maybe tomorrow, I think maybe tomorrow. Um, so take a look at it, um, you know, fill out some of the questions. If, if, it, if you think it makes sense for you, um, then it, it probably does. Um, so if you, if you get to that point and you think you're ready for a next-gen network, um, like I said, partnering with someone or multiple someones is, is, is really the best way to get moving on it. You know, the skills required to build a next-gen network are hard to find and often expensive. Um, whoever you pick should be asking a lot of questions about your business before they ever get to solution design. Um, don't let someone come in and just push a solution down your throat. Um, they should really take the time to understand the applications that you're running, what you're trying to accomplish as a business, and the, and the current technology you run. Um, often we find that uh, IT staff have some of the tools that they need. They're just underutilized. Um, so finding a good partner that'll take the time to, to take all those things into consideration is important. Um, to, to recap kind of today, um, I'll let everybody get back to their afternoon. Um, I'll, I'll leave you with one, uh, the network for your organization is, is the baseline for your technology. Um, you know, leaving this webinar, you should be, be asking yourself, uh, when was the last time you evaluated your network and, um, and do you have a plan forward? Uh, second, uh, think about the big indicators. Um, you know, if you're considering an upgrade, uh, or consider an upgrade if you're on the verge of, of hardware refresh or business growth or, or shifting to the cloud or, or, or looking just to improve your security posture. Uh, and third, uh, make sure you're talking to the right partner, right? Ask the right questions uh, before you start building a network solution. You'll find yourself down an expensive, expensive rabbit hole, um, if not. Uh, so now uh, I guess I'll open it back up to any other questions that may have popped up. Um, 
Steph. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan, so much. Again, if you've got any questions, feel free to type them in on the chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. If not, Ryan's contact information uh, will be available so we can follow up with any questions that you have for him. Uh, one that did come through is, why did you align behind Fortinet? Uh, yeah, uh, I kind of answered that one earlier on. Um, uh, really because, you know, it was, um, you know, it was kind of first to market with Azure. Um, what we also liked about, you know, just Fortinet as an organization, they have a lot of great products. Um, it allowed our clients to uh, really kind of step into network transformation and cloud transformation rather than having to kind of rip and replace everything all at once. Uh, they, they, they had a very similar approach to how we handled uh, solution design where you can layer these solutions together um, and build on top of them rather than having to rip everything out. Okay, great. Another question that came in is, how long does it take to upgrade your network? Oh, um, so that's that's a really tough question. Um, uh, so, I mean, it depends on your, the the organization. It depends on what you have. You know, if you've got a solid foundation, right, you can add features and functionality on, you know, really, really, really quickly. I mean, you know, you know, just a couple of weeks. Um, if you're, you know, really behind and you're, you're, you've got a lot of that IT debt we talked about to pay off, you know, it can take up to a year sometimes. Um, you know, a lot of that actually depends on uh, the internet connectivity, to be honest with you. Um, internet connectivity shifts can, can take anywhere between, I mean, 90 and 120 days on average. And I've seen them take, you know, six months before. We do have another question that came in. We've got time to answer that. Are there any guidelines for determining the amount of internet speed needed to transition to the cloud? Good, good question. Um, so a lot of that, um, you know, really depends on um, what you're, you know, what you're connecting to. So are there any guidelines for determining the amount of internet speed needed to transition to the cloud? Um, so there are tools um, for sure that you can run on your, you know, your existing systems that will, uh, they'll, they'll spit out, you know, how much memory, how much processor, you know, how much network bandwidth is consumed, um, and where they talk to. Um, so we, we often will re run those tools before we shift organizations to the cloud uh, to, to make sure we're trying, you know, trying to predict as best we can. Um, it also depends on how many cloud applications you're running. Um, Right, so if you if you have a strong presence in the cloud already, um, you need a lot more bandwidth to accommodate all you know all those connections. Um, traditionally, right, if you if, if you have a lot of applications still internal, uh, right, all, you you connect to those. Uh, the majority of your people generally connect to those applications kind of locally. So, um, it, I, I hate to give an ambiguous answer, but it just kind of depends. Um, but there's definitely a lot, um, definitely tools you can you can run on your systems that will will tell you how much how much bandwidth you're consuming and where it's going and what kind of applications are running on it. 